is uh, Victoria. My username is Victoria and my full name is Victoria Dornina. And today I will be talking about bringing a fork to the drone fight. So, what is a fork? Most of you will know that forking is creating a copy of the existing content or software and developing it uh, independently. And Russian Wikipedia started to be copied almost from the start in 2001. And the forks are called Enciclones after early copying that automatically replaced Wiki with Enciclo. Therefore, Vikings became Enciclones. So here I have a Viking or Enciclo fighting the drone. So, Russian Wikipedia was opened in 2001 with an article about Russia, the birthplace of the elephant. Uh, at the moment, it has about 2 million articles and in the seventh place in the number of articles and 12th place by the uh, size of the articles. Right, so the first enciclonk which was opened in 2008 and it's called Tradition and it's a Russian encyclopedia, it's a network project that exists to create, collect and organize knowledge in the interest of the Russian nation. So you can imagine what sort of content is there. Also, I want to tell you that uh, you see that many forks are drifting in the direction which doesn't make them uh, encyclopedias in the strict sense anymore. Uh, for example, tradition contains uh, articles by one author and it can, can be just their opinion. So they have uh, 41,000 of encyclopedic and 8,000 of authors articles. And in July, it had uh, 2,600 views. So if you don't want that it exists, uh, you wouldn't ever find it. And it's only that we know that exists and it is the longest running one. But they even didn't translate the interface. So it's a true Russian content using uh, bad Western technology. Uh, this is a more recent fork called Universalis. And that's how it looked like a year ago. It was created by a splinter group of Wikipedians. Uh, one of them is, was a Czech user, a bureaucrat, and he was in the Russian Wikipedia almost from the start. He also uh, didn't hide that he is a former uh, KGB colonel. So it was logical that he decided to splinter. And again, this project does not uh, try to hide uh, its ideology. So it said hosted in Russian servers and complied with Russian laws. Uh, it had more than uh, Russian Wikipedia articles because they copied uh, 19th century encyclopedias. And in, it had one and two million visits in June. So at the moment, it has three million articles and texts, uh, one seven point million files and articles, and uh, there are millions of visits to it. Uh, again, these uh, four projects, they often start as a copy of Wikipedia, and then they start incorporating other Wikimedia projects, so-called uh, uh, <laughs> Sister projects such as uh, Commons, they have their own files. Uh, Wikisource, they have texts that are in their uh, common use. But you will see that this is a familiar interface, uh, featured article, do you know, and then a special military operation, which is the war, but they insist on calling it that.
But this is a private pro uh, project run by a group of volunteers. Uh, as we see with tradition, it can be stable, but it do doesn't have uh, enough. Uh, the more uh, worrying one, and which was opened with uh, much fanfare, was uh, Rubika. And Rubika is an informal name of Russian Wikipedia. Uh, like English Wikipedia is called in Russian Anglovika. But they took the name, and the society was society, community, community, Wikimedians, community was quite upset about it. And uh, their Dr. Bag or Vladimir Medeko, who used to be director of Russian Charter, uh, was uh, removed as a director. And he was indefinitely blocked because he tried to crush Wikimania in Singapore. Uh, at the moment, the Russian Charter is dissolved because it was declared a foreign agent, and unfortunately, the next director of it, Stas Kozlovsky, was also declared a foreign agent, which means that they have uh, less civil rights, uh, and uh, he was fired from his job as well. So when it's open, it uh, declared convenience, opens neutrality, re reliability, uh, and I thought, wow. This is great. Why couldn't we do it? You know, and it, it offers that there will be no conflict between editors as well. Again, dream come true. So a year later, it's still there. There are some additional articles, but you can see that the interface is completely different. Now it looks like more a news portal where you have different tiles for different uh, events and these are articles and also when they declared uh, about opening this project the question was are they going just to copy Russian Wikipedia or other languages which are uh, people who live uh, small small languages on the territory of Russian Federation and uh, they did that uh, in about, I, if I'm not mistaken, 12 main languages, Tatar, Bashkir. Uh, so uh, there is a several, several articles about it in the press recently, what happened to it a year later. And generally, uh, they didn't make it better, as they said. They take Wikipedia and then they start censoring. They start removing, because removing, uh, cutting is always easier than making something new. So LGBT rights, Soviet history and war of Ukraine, their articles are edited. Uh, then historical uh, events such as execution of Polish officers and cutting. The Soviet Union never admitted it. And now they say it was not done by Soviet soldiers. And Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny, who died in prison, is called a blogger. So in August 2023, editor's registration was open. They have volunteers and paid editors. They have 122 admins, which are recruited via ad, ads on Russian recruiting websites. They're currently looking for editors in economics, medicine, as well as software engineers. Uh, and most studies are done during working hours, so it's mostly paid editors that are working on it. Uh, so another dream come true, every Wikipedian, almost every Wikipedian, um, dreams about getting money for their job, and now there is a possibility. Of course, it comes with caveats. You will not work on uh, pictures, uh, on articles about painting. You will just remove all the recent information that contradicts to what Russian government does, if you want to do that. 
Also, there is an uh, associated media campaign. So paid trolls write glowing reviews on social media and on the Russian search engine Yandex. And you know fake reviews, they all have the same word. This is the, the best site ever. I liked it very much. Uh, so all the sources show that it's a bank, Nestor Bank, which supports it. So, and they've spent five million. And you would say, oh, well, for five million, they have this wonderful site, and the Wikimedia Foundation is spending 180 million. But this is a small person standing on the uh, shoulders of the giants. They use MediaWiki, they use all the support, and then, then they go and cut parts out of it and, and get good money for it. Right, this, they not only have uh, ads in the, on the internet, this is a billboard uh, in Rostov Don, and it says new internet encyclopedia, and there is a fun fact, Gorky Seta is bo uh, was built in the shape of tractor, Rush Ruviki, and you know where you find to find out. Right, uh, there is a recent article in Gazeta Ru, uh, interview with Vladimir Medeko, where he says that we launch advertising. They will have native banners. Uh, so another dream come true, but I don't know whose dream, that you will have their ads. And they advertise it like uh, your personal portal into the world of knowledge. So you will be able to customize, to choose the fonts, to choose what you are shown. Uh, but in response, you, as, as a payment for that, you will be shown banners. And as my colleague Lorenzo Loza told that if you try to do too many things, you probably won't do them well. They decided to go this way and convert Wikipedia into a media portal. Uh, I don't know. Uh, another news, uh, there is an electronic version of the Great Russian Encyclopedia, which is an equivalent of Encyclopedia Britannica, but Encyclopedia Britannica never had anything to do with uh, the government. It's a private organization, this company. Here, they started from Soviet encyclopedia, and it's a newpedia. So you have academics that write articles, then it goes through several cycles of uh, uh, editing, and it's, uh, and I know that some Wiki, Wikipedians wrote for it. It's also paid, so, uh, but they usually didn't leave the Russian. Uh, Wikipedia. So uh, the project was suspended because they decided to discontinue funding from the Russian government. Is it connected to Ruvika? Uh, yes, probably, but uh, Wikipedians were supporting uh, great Russian encyclopedias. There was on the forum, there was an attempt to write a petition in support of it, but petitions in Russia do Nothing. They don't. They don't care. They decided that Ruvika is a better vehicle for their government propaganda than uh, verified, written by academic, good, great Russian encyclopedia. Right. So, what do we see in the result of the search? Uh, this is search for a Ukrainian city, um, and uh, similar results for several other searches. I don't think. It's a Russian search engine, Yandex, and you see that there is Wikipedia first, then there is translation of English Wikipedia, and then we have Google News, a popular blog about history that has a Zoom, then we have Russian Encyclopedia, and here is Ruvika with, uh, I don't know how recognizable this green and purple logo. So they made a progress because a year ago they were somewhere on the third page of the search. Now they're on the first page of the search, but still behind Wikipedia. But 
the question, of course, is they're paying the editors. So would they uh, disrupt and destroy the Russian community? And this is comparison with uh, German Wikipedia, European uh, encyclopedia, relatively mature. I don't know, maybe there is a better model, but that's what I thought of. So the Russian Wikipedia is in blue and German is red. So during the last year, total page views is down by 20% in Russian Wikipedia. Edits, 10% down. New registered users down and net by difference down. But if you look at German Wikipedia, it's less pronounced, but it's the same trend. All these uh, parameters are going down, and it's probably connected to the AIs and other uh, sources when people are not accessing Wikipedia directly, but through uh, Alexa and other, and other uh, devi uh, devices. Right. What is interesting is that the number of unique devices is more than twice the taxes Wikipedia uh, than in German in Germany. So I have no explanation to it. Obviously, not every Russian suddenly has uh, five laptops or mobiles, and. Uh, there are also data which are not there because we don't have change in active editors. So basically some people left because I know people who were unhappy uh, with what's happening in Russian Wikipedia and they loudly banged the door and said, I'm going to Ruvika and I will be paid for it. But in general, there is no change and the total media request again both in Russian Wikipedia and German Wikipedia, there is no change. So I can also say, yes? Just a remark, could it be that uh, in Russia more VPNs are used? And that actually explains the why uh, more unique devices are used? I, I, so the, the question is, is it explains VPNs? That was my hypothesis as well. But I talk to some tech people, and they say that VPN is not enough. You need to clear cookies every time and your browser remains the same. So unless, there was a question about scrubbers. Maybe it's scrubbers that come and take it. So maybe it's Rubika which gives us 20, 20%, but I don't know. Uh, I, would be, I would be happy to hear your hypothesis. Right, this is for, uh, if you want to access the slide, it shows, uh, these are sources, and thank you. So any questions? Just raise your hand. Okay, you have one. How is the original Russian Wikipedia uh, going on because they don't have many active editors now? Uh, I wouldn't say uh, that the number of editors is approxim approximately the same. So uh, we have fewer admins because uh, many Russian ad admins who actually live in Russia, uh, they give the, f the flag, flag away, right? But uh, I wouldn't say that there is fewer people. At the moment, there is summer, so there is less activity, but uh, another graph that I could have included was the number of uh, good and featured articles that were elected and it's on the trend. It's not, it's not flat for some reason. It's an interesting graph. Uh, year after year, it goes in cycles like that. So, and now we are at the smaller end of the cycle. So the question is, will it go back? Will it stay flat? Will it go down? I and as a long-term um, editor in these projects, I can see some new people coming in, some old people coming back after ten years. But that, that's normal. Uh, yes. Yeah, so I don't see. I, I watch. I watch uh, for the signs that yes, this is the end of the project. I will be the last person, and I will switch the lights off. You can say it's 
I would say that it's relatively stable. So in the last year, because when uh, the Ruvika was opened uh, in the last year, I wouldn't say that there is a significant de decline on any any parameter, except you see the readers and. So you see that the new registered users, that's where it's the, the biggest drop. Uh, because people are probably afraid. Uh, many people don't know that Wikipedia is not blocked in Russia. That's another interesting question, why it's not blocked. Even after, even after opening Ruvika, because everybody was, was in crisis mode and was expecting that it will be blocked. It's not blocked yet, but as usual, any any day now. Okay, any other questions? Okay, just a minute. Uh, so now, given uh, that the Russian government uh, had uh, finally dared to block such uh, giant as YouTube, uh, now uh, is the possibility of blocking a, a original Russian Wikipedia uh, increased? Uh, uh, is the uh, possibility that it will be uh, blocked increased? Uh, are there any signs that they are preparing for it? Uh, there are signs. There were some outages in some regions which can be considered as a preparation for the, for the blockage. Uh, and yes, of course, it's the uh, last site standing, so so to say, the, of, of the free and corrupt Western thinking. But uh, we don't know. As, as, of, as of today, it's not blocked. Or as of yesterday, I did it. Don't know what happened today. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, as a native English speaker, I studied Russian in college for four years and consider it my best second language. Would you encourage people like me who live outside Russia, who are not, who are pretty good second language Russian speakers or at least writers, to take up the slack a little bit in the Russian Wikipedia to help that community? Uh, small edits only, for a start, uh, because we have people who are trying to aid, aid the Russian Wikipedia and the language is not second, third language. And the problem is that the standard is quite high and noticed, it would, because it's, it's, a mature, it's a mature Wikipedia, so people are suspicious of the newcomers. This is one of the reasons as well. But small edits are always welcome. Uh, English is not my first language and I edit English Wikipedia carefully sometimes. So of course you you are welcome. Uh, if you have any problems, Victoria, <laughs> find me. <laughs> so for RuWiki, the main reason is uh, for the fork is uh, political oppression, I guess. But it also seems to be. Uh, test how monetization works with the encyclopedia, is that right? Uh, I think it's not only that. Uh, Medeka, he wants to use AI more in general. He said that it will be more incorporated better than in, uh, in, in the normal Wikipedia. And he is a programmer, he can do it. The main reason for opening it, of course, money. He gets very good salary. They have a plush office in Moscow and everything. As I say, every, well, almost every Wikimedian dreams of earning money. He was earning some small little money, almost nothing, as a director of a uh, Russian chap chapter. And here, suddenly, he can do it full time, get good salary, get good salaries for his friends and colleagues and be an important person. He's been interviewed in the press. He talks to important people. And I do, frankly, I don't know if they have millions of US dollars, which is much more than Russian money from the bank. Why do they even need ads? 
I think that it will turn people away. As you see, the original content us doesn't have any ads. And then suddenly uh, you are shown ads. Would you trade it for having your own favorite font? I, I don't think so. But we'll see. It's a great experiment. I'm watching with interest. <clears throat> Hello. Thank you for your presentation. Does Russian Wikipedia community have any action plan in the case of blockage? Uh, yes, we do. We've been under this threat uh, for the last two years, and now we have uh, we have plans. <laughs> okay. So uh, looks I would be happy to talk to people after the session. I see there is probably last question in the room. Um, is the um, Russian population in general? aware of uh, this clone issue? I mean, given that Wikipedia is pretty popular and famous. Well, some, some of them are aware, I'm sure. If you have billboards, then if you have interviews in the press and everything. But I believe that general population just clicks on the first link, whatever you do. As much as you advertise on social media, but uh, you click on the first link. Okay, I think that's about...